Hi and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how I repot my string of hearts and how I propagate to make the pot fuller and make sure that the vines are all long and full and lush. Okay, so this is my string of hearts that I just got from the garden nursery. It does need a drink. <laughs> So, but it is really long already, but I will be cutting it off to make it even fuller. And you can tell it's dry by all these little wrinkles on the back of the leaves. And then whenever you squeeze the leaves, they touch together like that. That's how you know that they're thirsty. Whenever they are not thirsty, then their leaves are going to be really stiff and you're not going to be able to fold them that easy. And this one, you can tell it's already full on the top and it's already got a really good amount of length on the vines. So I am going to be putting it in a little bit bigger of a terracotta pot. You don't want to do anything super big because these are going to be more susceptible to root rot. So whenever you think of a string of heart, I would suggest thinking of it as a succulent. And when I'm repotting this, I am using my potting mixture, which is the vermiculite, peat moss, and perlite. So you can see all the white in there, and that's what the perlite is. It's just a nice, good, sterile mixture that I don't have to worry about fungus gnats or any other pest. And I don't have to worry about root rot because it's not going to be holding on to that moisture and this pot isn't bigger isn't well it is a little bit bigger but not as much compared to if i got a bigger pot then it will be more susceptible to holding in more water and killing your plant and i use the terracotta because it will pull the moisture from the dirt and i feel like that's a safer route for the string of hearts and then whenever I'm doing the string of hearts, I am doing what I do with all of my other house plants. I try to knock off all or most of the dirt that it came with. So there's the root system. And inside this pot, they used, it looks like peat moss, vermiculite, and orchid bark is what they used. And I don't have any orchid bark, but that's fine. What I'm using will work. And I'm gently trying to get this off without damaging the roots. And I am a little bit worried about taking all of this dirt mixture off because I'm worried that I will damage too much of the roots because the roots on the string of hearts are really fragile and really tiny compared to other houseplants. And then if you can see that in the camera, that's a little tuber and that's where they can grow from. And there's some down hanging at the bottom too. And I don't see any root rot. I am gently putting it in there and then I will be filling it back up with some more of my mixture. And then whenever I water this, I'm only going to water it when the leaves start to look a little crunchy or like the wrinkly on the other side and then they you can't touch the two leaves together is when I will be watering it. Because all my other house plants are on a schedule, so they're on a once a week schedule. Or for my snake plants, they're on a twice a month schedule. But I know a lot of people, whenever they buy the string of hearts, they overwater it and then it gets root rot and then it dies off. And then I'm untangling the top because it is really bad tangled whenever I repotted it. 
and whenever I untangle it, I'm going to be leaving it alone. I'm not going to be moving it around a bunch, and then when I have to repot it again, and I know I'll have to later on, I will still be using a terracotta pot. I mean, it's just gorgeous. The burgundy, pink undertone of those leaves, just absolutely my favorite. And the green on the top with all the, the veining, love it. And these are super long, so I will be propagating it. So that way I can make it an even fuller string of hearts container. So I have clean scissors that I have cleaned with alcohol. And then this one already snapped off when I was putting it inside the terracotta pot. So I'm just going to be cutting it in between the nodes. So just in between the leaves where it's the middle is where you're going to want to cut it. And then I just pull off some of the leaves and then I put that in the water. And you're going to want to be very gentle. Sorry for my dirty hands. You're going to want to be really gentle when you're pulling those leaves off because it will shred it kind of like string cheese. So you have to be very gentle when you pull that off. And I do know some people will use either just they cut this off, take the little leaves off like I, I'm doing, and then they stick it right back in the pot. But I want to have a little bit more of a root system before I put it back in the pot. So it gives it a better chance. And then there's another way that you can do it. You can put this wrapped around the top of your terracotta pot and let it root that way. Or you can take the leaves and butterfly them and stick them in the dirt or like a sphagnum moss and then propagate them that way. But this way just is really simple. You cut it, put it in the water, and then you're going to want to change the water out every couple days. You're going to want to change it just to make sure it stays clean. And I'll keep, I'll keep propagating the string of hearts until I get a full pot. And you can see that this one has, I don't know if it focused, it has a little bit of a liquid on the inside of these stems, like the little um, vines. And then whenever you're propagating this, you're going to want to have it to be in a full sun area, looking at the sun but the sun cannot physically touch the string of hearts that's how i do with all my plants that want more sunlight and same with the terracotta pot it's going to be in sunlight without physically seeing the sun and that is the end of today's video thank you for watching like and subscribe